What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today it's day one of the PTR and I'm so happy to present to you Dance of Knives. More importantly, we are gonna be rocking the brand new key passive, the, alchem what is this? the, the alchemical admixture. So dealing three different damage uh, types of non-fizz damage increases the potency of our imbuement skills. But this post potency is further increased by 20% of our total bonus damage to Poison Shadow and Cold, which currently is a 120% multiplicative damage. So this is really, really cool. I want to give a big shout out to Demon for uh, shout like doing this build and helping me with it. He's a big, big community member. He's a day one guy. Uh, combining Andariels and Doombringer for our shadow damage and our poison damage. And then we rock Cold Imbuement for all three. Now, the, uh, the another reason that this is so high is because all of our bonuses from our non-fizz damage, which I'll go into in just a little bit. So I'm gonna break down the skill tree, Paragon, what we have so far, and our gear, everything that you need to play this build. This is by far my favorite build that I'm gonna play next season. I don't even care about Spiritborn anymore, but this is what we're gonna do. So let's break down some skills here. So we are rocking Heartseeker into Fundamental because we are a crit build, okay? We're a crit chance build and we are a lucky hit build. When we have our inner sight popped, we are a 100% crit chance, okay? 100%, all right? Right now, our crit chance is currently six or 68. When we get our uh, bonus from inner sight, we go almost to 100%, I'm sorry, almost to 100%. Uh, let's go back into skills here, guys. So we got Heartseeker to add more crit, which isn't factored on our sheet. So we should be 100% crit. Then we're gonna come down, we're taking target practice for even more crit. Then we're taking stutter step for even more movement speed because we are a channeling build and we wanna move as fast as possible to reach the 30% or 30 meter uh, milestone. So that way we can keep our channeling going nonstop. Then we got sturdy for damage reduction. We got siphoning strikes for healing. We are taking shadow step into discipline shadow step for even more uh, damage and cooldown. Then we are taking Dance of Knives. We max this, we're going into Discipline because this is gonna slow them and give us a chance to pierce. So we're gonna be able to clear really, really fast. I have not tested the Methodical yet with all the, the stun uh, grenades. I do think that there is a place for this with this build, but right now we went for the crit version. Next, we are maxing out Weapon Mastery for even more damage. We are maxing out Trick Attacks for even more damage and Chris Strike damage. We're doing unstable elixirs because you have to have this because drinking a potion stuns and increases our damage. We do got one point into dash here. I really need to um, add one more point from something. I guess I take it from sturdy maybe and do this for the enhanced. Uh, you could really do the knockdown here with discipline dash, which would be fine. Um, but we're going to leave it there for now. Next, of course, we come down and we take dark shroud because we're going to get this to cast for free into countering for more crit strike damage or crit strike chance excuse me then we're taking smoke grenade into countering this is really going to allow us to daze our enemies and trigger a big power this season of course we max exploit and malice always then we're going to come down we are taking prison in or precision imbuement for even more crit chance with our imbued skills which is cold which you can see with this build when you channel it's really really easy uh, then we're taking Frigid Finesse, of course, here for even more damage. We are a cold imbued build, so we're taking that into mixed. We deal 20% multiplicative damage to crowd control enemies and double it if they're frozen. Super easy. You do not need blended whatsoever. Then we're going to come down. We do Alchemist Fortune for more lucky hit. We take Ipidus for even more damage. Now, after moving 15 meters, which is very easy to do, our next core and ultimate skill deals increased damage. We don't care about that part. We care while this bonus damage is ready, meaning we haven't casted an ultimate or a core, our basic agility and sub skills have in 15% multiplicative increased damage, which will be all the time. Then of course we take adrenaline rush with haste for even more move speed. Then our key passive of course is alchemical uh, admixture. So we got 120% multiplicative damage right now. So we got our skills in the tree. Let's go over to our gear. Now, it is required for this build in this version to do Andes plus Doombringer, okay? You have to have these. Now, you can go away from these two items, and you can do Shaco, and you can do Tyrael's Might. Tyrael's Might is completely optional. 
you still see that we hit our armor caps and we have or well this guy gave us a bonus but um let me let me pop something else here um uh, yeah attack speed so we are still oh that's a that's a thing in incense we were at a thousand nine before that like little pop so we do max there and we already have our max here even without uh andy's so we're maxed no matter what so you do not need Tyrios for this build, although Tyrios is very strong. It gives us more move speed. Our all reses are easier to do, which frees up some points in the board. And we get damage reduction, and then we get the Divine Barrage, but you do not need it. Now, if you want to go the other version here, you could take away Andes and Doombringer. And then you can go down and do Momentum, which is what I was running before. Okay, if you do this, then you rock Shaco. You can do Tyrios, and then you're all set. You replace Doombringer with a regular sword and another power. But... In this build, we are doing Andes, right, with attack speed. Then we're doing Frostbitten here. We do 25% increased um, damage to frozen or stunned enemies, which is all the time. Then we are doing Fist of Fate here. This is a legacy item, so hopefully we get a higher roll, but we got the lucky hit chance because our lucky hit on uh, Dance of Knives is 44 with it. As soon as we take this away, we go down to a measly 23. So Fist of, the, of uh, Fate is required for the build. I hate using this glove, but it is very good. Then on our pants, we got Umbris, Critical Strikes, which is going to be all the time, gives us our free Dark Shroud. Then we got Nebulous Bruise. This is a brand new power. I really like it. Using a healing potion gives us increased movement speed for three seconds. And now we can drink them while at full life. And every 20 meters we, we uh, travel, we get another healing potion. This is like a free slot. Um, if you do decide to do Turial's Might, you drop Frostbitten to your boots and you're good to go. On our bow, we're doing Shattered shard, or, or, uh, Star Shards. Um, knives uh, from Dance have a chance to shatter into six shards of metal and deal increased damage. I really love this. And then if you do want to do combo points in this build, you can. It does take our charges from six to nine, which is very, very cool. Um, and it, it will also only go to nine. So while you are spinning, you can go to nine consuming your combo points. And then if you let go, it immediately go back, goes back to six, so you can't stack it. Uh, then of course doombringer and then we got synergy here using an agility school reduces our uh, cooldown by the next for uh, the cooldown of our next sub skill by 20 percent using a sub skill increases our damage of our agility so this is our sub skill smoke grenade and then our agility skill is dance of knives very very strong 50 percent extra damage is pretty good on a ring we got true sight we deal 100 percent increased critical strike damage to enemies marked by inner sight because that is what we are running we are doing inner sight here. You do not have to do combo points and you will not use preparation because we don't spend any energy whatsoever. So while this is full, this just gives us another 25% uh, crit damage. And then with true sight, we deal 100% increased damage. And then while inner sight is full, we gain 30% increased damage overall. So this thing is absolutely bonkers. Next, we have edge masters because our resource, our energy will always be full. And then we got Stolen Vigor here. While at stacks of momentum, key passive, your cutthroat skills deal 68% increased damage and you become unstoppable. Now this is here because while you're running momentum, this is what you do. If you do not, if you're using this build, you're gonna take Stolen Vigor away. And the only other power that I can really come up with is there's like two of them that you can really go through. The two options that I like are Retaliation Oops. Uh, retali or excuse me, retribution. Sorry, not retaliation. Re retribution, increase uh, multiple duplicative damage to uh, stunned or knock down enemies. This helps for the bosses. Or you could do the new power, which is kind of okay. It's the splintering shards here. Chance to um, hitting or killing a frozen enemy to, uh, to create ice splinters, which deal um, cold damage and chill. This is okay. I but the better one I like is just the retribution here because we're no longer using that and then you deal 45 percent increased damage to stun or knock down enemies which applies to the bosses so this is what we have here we got inner sight on there and then on our paragon board day one this is it's weird man i really i really don't like that we have uh only five boards so this is gonna be talked about a lot in the community but from myself as well as other creators and i really hate that we are limited to five okay so but here we go we have canny because the more non-physical damage that we do, the higher our key passive multiplicative damage bonus is, okay? So we got canny here in the first board. Then we got, uh, excuse me, next board we have 
um, closer for cutthroat damage because Dance of Knives is a cutthroat skill. And we're taking Tricks of the Trade. Your Marksman skills grant cutthroat skill increased damage for eight seconds. So that's where Heartseeker comes in. You fire a Heartseeker and then you get 25% multiplicative damage for our Dance of Knives. Super easy. Next, we are taking uh, Versatility for even more non-core skill damage and more vulnerable damage, crowd control damage, super strong. And then we take Cheap Shot. We deal increased damage for crowd control, always gonna happen. And our fourth board, we're taking control, obviously, because we're freezing. So crowd control damage, multiplicative damage against frozen and stunned, no brainer. We're taking uh, exploit weakness here. Hitting an enemy has a chance to increase our damage up to 25% multiplicative, super good. And then in our final board here, which is tough, I still don't know what to put here, but this, we kind of figured this would just be good. Uh, we got exploit here for the vulnerable and multiplicative damage. And then we come all the way up and we're gonna take Eldritch Bounty. When we attack with Imbued Skill, which will be cold, we gain max resistance to it and we do 20% increased damage with the Imbuement Element, multiplicative damage. So I'm guessing it's cold damage. So this is kind of here. I didn't really know what, what last board to pick. If you guys got some options, let me know down in the comments below. So there we go, there we have it. We're cooking with time. these builds this season. Now, I'm up past Torment 3 now. We're just getting to 53. So I'm just gonna do a 50 here. Cause this is where I'm at. I think this is a good baseline for a lot of builds when you're first starting to get there before you find ancient items and, or excuse me, ancestrals. And let me tell you, I really do enjoy the chance to find these. So besides this one, which wouldn't count right now, uh, I made Andes and Doombringer and updated those. But besides that, I've only found two. This is the third one that I have found. So in the whole time playing today, I've only found three ancestrals or excuse me, four. So it's kind of cool that they're a little bit more rare, but that's for another video. So let's go ahead and do it a 50. Let's go ahead and blast this. This should be a lot of fun. Okay, so make sure you guys like this video. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think. All right, don't forget to subscribe and let's blast. So all you're gonna do is pop cold imbuement, right? Get this going and you're just gonna spin. It's spin to win. You're gonna cast Heartseeker similar to God DH before to get that bonus, right? You're gonna get that bonus super easy and you're just blasting right you get all these bonuses and you deal so much damage it is a no brainer now the entire time that you're spinning you're gonna see that my cold imbuement does not go away until i stop channeling once i stop channeling it actually uses that charge so as long as you can spin you can always be cold imbued which is pretty sweet but you do want a heart seeker every eight seconds to get that bonus. I need more time. You definitely want to do that. And we're just blasting. I don't use the smoke grenade too much, but it is very, very strong. I definitely use it on the bosses for sure. But every eight seconds, you kind of want to just add that in there. Now, one other thing about, um, dances with knives is interesting is that while I'm spinning and you add an imbuement in okay like I'm already spinning and I hit my imbuement I'm not actually cold imbued up anymore so I have to stop and restart for the, the imbuement to actually take effect so that's one small thing that I find very interesting um, considering barbarians can just shout and they get the bonuses from that so I think while we're spinning we should be able to like just add the bonus on and not have to start and go again but we'll see what happens with that but you can see we just absolutely decimate everything everything in this absolutely crazy and at first when i started playing this to level up i will say that this build or uh dances with knives is very strong in leveling as well it's not super weak it may not be the best best but once you get it going, it's very strong for leveling. Very strong. We've already CC'd him. And then he's just dead. Super easy. We just got another Ancestral. We got combat. Very strong. The leveling up process is so easy. So it tells you how many you get for the plus here. So we're on Kenny because we want more. So two, 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 two. It goes so fast, but 
Yeah, this is absolutely insane. I do want to add in and just note... Uh, we just got that dagger there. Max dex, perfect. That's probably going to replace this dagger here because we don't care about overpower damage at all. And we actually bricked the dash to deal double damage. So we bricked that. Um, so very, very fun. I love dances with knives or dance with knives. It literally reminds me of God DH from Diablo 3. It is fantastic to play. Super fun. Um, definitely, we got more builds to come, guys. I know it's the PTR, but we'll update all these builds once we get into Season 6. But this is by far the best. I don't even know if I want to test anything else for this. Um, it's super fun. So, um, armor increased. We're good to go. But yeah, guys, like the video, comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.